Good morning. It's a very nice morning here in Lawrence. I, I am not sure what time is it over there, but whatever it is, I hope it's a good day. Um, in the last two conversations that I had with you, we were talking about uh, first what is biodiversity from a perspective of policy making, what, what topics, what themes in biodiversity uh, science are likely to need uh, to be Trans, transform into some sort of policy making on some sort of uh, uh, changing of, uh, of of what is happening via legislations or budgets or enforcement or taxes or whatever. <clears throat> and we also spoke a little bit about what are those those uh, factors of policy and of governance that can be translated into actions uh, in favor of biodiversity. Mm. What I am going to do in this session of today is <clears throat> I'm going to describe in a, in, in, in a much more detailed uh, way uh, how it is done. And this is going to be based on both on my own experiences over my 13 years working for the federal government of Mexico in Conavio, and also based on um, a few papers that I will um, uh, be, I mean, th this, these things have been discussed theoretically uh, by sociologists, by people that do research on, on knowledge to policy transferring, and, and, and they're very interesting papers. So I'm going to, to cite two papers by, which I regard as very fundamental classic uh, papers, and also a paper of mine in which I describe my own experiences in Conavio doing, doing this, this knowledge to, to policy transferring. <clears throat> so, governance and scale. Uh, this is the first thing that uh, I need to elaborate on. Um, there are many, uh, well, as, as I said before, there are many actors and many uh, components to every single problem and you have to be able to to establish who are the relevant actors. Uh, in the study that have been made about this and there are um, at least a handful, it's amazing how many, even in the most local problems, there are actors that belong to several other levels. So there are uh, I mean, the, act, the main actors may be farmers or, or villagers in a community, but uh, for sure there are going to be also um, government um, officers involved, perhaps even federal or national level government uh, officers. There may be international NGOs, multilateral agreement uh, related people, like for instance World Bank officers, GEF uh, people, uh, it's it's always very complicated and very multi-scale. Uh, there are a few papers um, showing one this side on the screen, which is um, a very good one describing this kind of, of situation. But um, please think about this when when you are um, involved in a real case uh, situation. You have to locate yourself into this hierarchy and uh, keep uh, keep uh, keep in mind what are the, the 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 focal stakeholders, the focal actors that you need to deal with, but also keep in mind the up and the down level um, other actors. There is another paper describing a situation where there is no, or rather than a situation, um, proposing that the right way of analyzing these problems is not by a hierarchical kind of structure, but rather a web-like situation where everything is connected with everything. Those are theoretical questions. <clears throat> I, I don't have an answer for you about which one is better. Perhaps somebody did that, but I don't know. I don't think it matters much. What matters is that you keep in your mind all the time that you have a focal situation and there are uh, other uh, factors going on outside of that focal uh, uh, situation. Some of them may be very important, some of them may not be that important. Just keeping in mind that there are many actors all the time. That's, that's the first lesson I would like to, um, to transmit to you. In the second paper that I want to to um, 
discuss it's the one that is this side of the screen that paper uh, describes um, several really important concepts and I, I, I would recommend that you uh, download the paper from the internet and I just read it because it's an excellent analysis this paper um, describes three situations or three factors or three components of successful um, knowledge to policy um, cases. Um, it's based, the paper is based on, on an analysis of several uh, case studies. So the first one is that knowledge or science is not going to change policy just by existing. It, it, there is a process and that process uh, is composed by several uh, important components. The first one is that knowledge has to be relevant to the stakeholders. Knowledge is not relevant in itself. Dep it's, 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 it depends on the point of view. For instance, uh, from the perspective of a scientist, um, a species may be really important because it's an endemic, rare, uh, very unique evolutionary, perhaps it's the only remnant uh, species in an entire family that, that has uh, gone extinct elsewhere in the world. So it's very fascinating and very interesting from a scientific point of view. For a politician that may be totally relevant, they don't care. What they may care about is whether that species is or not in, in the national list of endangered species. And it is going to be even more interesting for them if there are groups, uh, say Greenpeace or any local NGO that is willing to spend time uh, talking with the newspapers and making a scandal because there's going to be a highway that is going to go over the little pond where this last remnant of an entire evolutionary line lineage is, is, is located. So from the politician what may be what made the species relevant it, it is because it is protected already in some list and and that happens in many countries so what you have to do is not to to to, to claim that the, the species is important because of its evolutionary uh, history you claim it is important because it's in a law and if it's not protected you're going to sue the politician and that changes entirely the perspective of the of, of, of a complete thing. So relevance, what is relevant, positively and negatively, that's the first thing. Um, second thing, you have to make the, um, the, the entire um, knowledge uh, contribution credible. Um, it's important that you have the best available expert, the people that is more uh, credible, most most uh, trustful. Um, if the data or the analysis comes from uh, people with no history, no credibility, no authority, then um, it's likely to be much less um, acceptable, more le much less influential. This is kind of sad because knowledge should be knowledge. Uh, not necessarily associated to authority, but uh, in the real world that matters a lot. So you need to have credibility in your knowledge, uh, so the, 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 the backing of someone that is accepted by a large sector of society as reliable, as credible. Uh, the National University, a very, um, very well-known um, expert, national preferably, if not a foreign, but you need to have that credibility part. The last one, which is forgotten almost universally by scientists and academics, is fundamental. And this last one is that you need to have, it's called legitimacy. Legitimacy means that you need to have the stakeholders involved in a joint project, in a joint process, together with them from the beginning in order to make the knowledge uh, not only relevant, not only credible, but legitimate. If you come up, uh, to, to, the, to, to, to the negotiating table, because there is going to be some 
there is going to be some very valid and interesting project about, um, say, um, harvesting and, and production of some pharmaceutical out of a medicinal plant. Valid, interesting, good science, a market, everything you need to start talking with the local people from the beginning and listening to their concerns and incorporating their points of view uh, even in the research um, there may they may be very interesting uh, differences in the approach they would take uh, oftentimes valid uh, um, differences so involve the the, the, all the stakeholders from the beginning as much as possible. Sometimes it's very difficult, but try, because this is um, a major uh, source of failure in knowledge to policy transferring. When you come with your beautiful solution published in science, sit down at the table, and and then the and a big sector of the of the stakeholders are going to say. We were not involved. We don't know what is that. We have never read science. We don't know what science is. Uh, the magazine, who cares? We don't read English. We speak um, We speak Tojolabal. So in Tojolabal, that doesn't matter. Uh, and you ignored our very valid concern because this plant is a sacred plant for us or whatever. And your beautiful science is not going to be regarded as legitimate because from the beginning, all the stakeholders were not involved in deciding how the research was going to be um, <clears throat> conducted or assimilated or included in their own things. So these three things, uh, relevance, credibility, and, uh, and legitimacy are very, very important uh, points. So you did everything right. Uh, you um, are defining the problem in, in, in ways that are relevant for the stakeholders. You uh, use the best science available and everybody was together from the beginning uh, thinking how are we going to do this so the process is legitimate. Still, there are a few other things that you need to take into account. Uh, when you start actually publishing the results and, and going to um, trying to affect uh, things of higher level, like for instance, um, um, uh, law, um, um, uh, taxes, uh, budget, things like that. You need to ensure that whatever you do, it translated into the right language of the of the target stakeholders. Um, this is something related to what I said before. If you go and say, oh, this is very important because Baronia brevicornis, a butterfly which is unique evolutionary, is here, uh, most people will just give you blank stares and say, what do we care? Uh, you have to, to, to use the right wording for the stakeholders. If they are lawyers, speak about the legislation, the, the law, the in, 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 uh, threatened uh, law, I mean, law for, for threatened species, whatever. If they are an economist, try to find an economic value for whatever you are doing and that kind of thing. Translate. Translating is important. It's better left for professionals or for teams of scientists plus a journalist or an expert in education or whatever, people with, with experience in, 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 in using uh, plain words um, and not avoid jargon, uh, do brief explanations, uh, provide illustrations, things like that. First thing, translation. Second one, <coughs> you need to, um, uh, to be able to, to do the... the Use the proper channels for the diffusion of your very nice translated and beautifully packed product. What are the best channels? In some countries, it may be radio. In others, maybe television. In others, maybe the internet. In others, maybe a, a specific um, program by some specific uh, committed um, anchor women or anchor men. I don't know. It changes. It changes very, very much from one country to the other. It depends on the culture, depends on the de degree of development, depends on tons of things. It is really um, silly, and I have seen it happening many times, that it happens a lot from people coming from the US or from Europe. Um, they just assume that since um, 
in their country. The best media is such and such. It's going to be the same everywhere else. They may be able to, to do some things like hiring a local, very knowledgeable um, company or firm that does public relations in very successful in Boston and then try to make it work in, 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 in Bangalore. Well, maybe it will work, maybe not. Bangladesh, probably not. So you need to take into account uh, that kind of thing. What, what is the actual channel that you're going to use to communicate to the broad or broader public your findings? And the third one, <coughs> this is probably the most important one in my experience, in my personal experience. You have to be prepared to allocate the time which is going to be years before things start changing. Uh, this is this is a fundamental lesson. You have to be uh, well steady and look at the long term. the 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 fact that things do not start changing within months or weeks, when you know that the um, I don't know some somebody is uh, is clearing a forest or 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 a beautiful lake is being polluted or things like that. Well, that's a fact of life. Uh, sometimes you are able to speed up the process because whatever the reasons, perhaps because you are very energetic and really, really, really trying hard and aiming to the correct stakeholders and have the right support and all that. But most of the time, what you do is to work with this legis legislature, this chamber, and in three years there's going to be a new one because there were elections. Okay, you go start with the new working with the new ones and then in another three years they're going to change and so on um, when I talk about the Conabio um, um, experience I will give you some some specific examples of this kind of thing but persistent being tenacious uh, trying to, to think, see things happening in the long term and just sticking at the, the, your message and your objectives and your aims regardless of the changes at different government levels or the individuals are appearing and disappearing when during the 13 years I was working for Conavio I saw three presidents of Mexico and five ministers of the environment and um, th four different changes in Congress four every time they came new and you have to explain things again but um, this is going to get me to the, the last final point. When you have the institutional capacity to do this long-term, steady, um, um, tenacious kind of, of transmitting, then you are in an excellent position to get changes um, actually taking place.